Hey everyone. There were a lot of great movies in 2023, but that is not what we're here to talk about. While it is important to recognize the good movies that get it right, I feel it's just as important to analyze the bad movies that got it wrong, which can also in turn make us appreciate the good movies even more. I actually have been looking forward to this list because this is the first time I've ever seen enough movies to do a top 10 worst list, 102 to be exact. And while many of those movies were admittedly bad, I was fortunate not to see a lot that were outright terrible. Of course, that means the ones that were really terrible stuck out like like a sore thumb. Just a few notes before we begin. While I have seen a lot of movies this year, keep in mind that I could not see absolutely everything. There actually were a few bad movies that I started watching and then realized I just really didn't want to waste my time finishing them, or movies that I could have gone to see in theaters like The Marvels or Aquaman 2 that I've heard people say are really bad, but I just didn't want to. And the usual disclaimer, this is solely my opinion based on which movies I did not like. If you'd rather hear a more positive outlook of the year, I have a companion video where I share my top 10 best movies of 2023. So with all that out of the way, we may as well get into this and see what I think are the absolute worst movies of 2023. Starting things off at number 10, we have The Drop. 2023 really made me realize just how much I hate cringe comedies, particularly ones about a group of friends getting together on an island and dealing with dumb problems, and The Drop embodies all the worst aspects of this oddly specific genre. The movie is basically about this woman who's so stressed that she drops a baby, her friends get upset about it, and that's pretty much it. All the movie's momentum goes away, the friend group drifts from one activity to the next, drama ensues. It's honestly so hard for me to remember this movie in detail because none of the characters are particularly memorable or likable, and I found myself wishing it would hurry up and be over. Topped off by annoying, dumb jokes and a conflict I didn't care about, the drop didn't get 2023 off to a good start. This next one may be a hot take, but at number 9 is Blue Beetle. A lot of people really liked Blue Beetle or were at least pretty forgiving of its problems. I'm not one of them. If you saw my review for Blue Beetle, you'll know I found it incredibly frustrating because it embodies everything wrong with modern superhero movies. It had an overly crowded cast of underwritten characters, most of whom are really annoying and care more about trying to be funny than feeling like real people. The superhero movie formula is very predictable, and while I recognize that no comic book film is going to be 100% original, that's no excuse for a lack of ambition. Almost every somewhat cool scene reminds me of a better movie that executed the same idea in a more interesting way, and it makes me wish I was watching one of those movies instead. The main villain is laughably two-dimensional, but not in an entertaining way, and her henchman isn't much better. I respect that a lot of people really seem to enjoy Blue Beetle, but personally, I just don't see the appeal. Moving from DC to Marvel, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Blue Beetle may have been mediocre, but Quantumania is straight up terrible. I like to describe this movie as a roller coaster of disappointment. It starts terrible, but gradually gets good with moments of greatness only to plummet again in the third act. The ending killed the movie for me, while the post credit scene killed any faith I had in the rest of Phase 5. I know pointing out bad CGI in the MCU is nothing new, at this point, but it's really awful in this movie, and almost every scene looks like an actor is just standing in front of a green screen. But what makes the movie so disappointing is those moments of greatness that show its potential, and the movie could have had an emotional ending by having Scott and Kate trapped in the quantum realm, but they decided to force a stupid happy ending instead, cause why not? Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is one of the most frustrating movies of the year, but unfortunately things only got worse. Coming in at number 7 is Haunted Mansion. I can't say I was particularly disappointed by Haunted Mansion, but I was upset at having wasted several hours of my life and hard-earned money by going to see it in theaters. I enjoyed maybe 10% of this film, and that's being generous. For a movie full of comedy and some of the best comedic actors in the business, most of the jokes are more irritating than funny. But the real problem is that there are just 
too many cast members for any of the characters to be developed properly, and the movie drags way longer than it needs to. There are some moments of visual creativity, but for the most part, the movie looks pretty bland. It's always heartbreaking when there's so much talent and resources at a studio's disposal, yet they completely squandered and turn out forgettable mush. I cannot recommend avoiding Haunted Mansion enough. Go to an actual Haunted Mansion instead. You'd be better off. Moving on to number 6. Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken came out on June 30th and has the main character go underwater to find an important artifact. I really wish I had gone to see that instead of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It may not technically be the worst, but Indy 5 is easily the most disappointing movie of the year for me, and it really shouldn't be since I went in with no expectations. I was ready for it to be bad, but I didn't think it would be this bad. The movie was already at a disadvantage because it was a story absolutely nobody asked for and absolutely did not need to happen. Say what you will about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but it generally treated Indiana Jones with respect and gave him a happy ending. Then we cut to this movie and Disney makes all the same mistakes they made with another Harrison Ford character in a franchise created by George Lucas. Indy has lost his son and is separated from his wife, living out a miserable existence and having no respect at a job he's overqualified for. Sound familiar? I love Harrison Ford, but he was already pushing it in the last movie, and he just can't do indie-style action anymore because he's 80 years old. So instead, we're treated to an extremely unlikable Helena Shaw, who meshes with Indy about as well as you'd expect. While the previous Indiana Jones films always felt special with Steven Spielberg behind the camera, this movie just looks very generic and isn't all that exciting. The script is also a mess, especially with how it handles the main villain, and the twist at the end did not work for me at all. And this is weird to say, but it feels like the movie didn't have a proper climax, like they suddenly realized they'd passed the $300 million mark so they didn't film a proper transition and just cut back to Indy's apartment. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a lazy, disrespectful, and unenjoyable film that shows just what happens when Disney and Lucasfilm refuse to learn from their mistakes. Basically, the way my parents' generation felt after walking out of Indy 4 is how I felt after walking out of Indy 5. Think about that. Moving into the top half of the list is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Now the first half of this list dealt with films that were underwhelming or disappointing, but these next five films are objectively bad, which means I have to include this one. This movie is weird because it didn't offend me personally on first viewing, and I don't even hate the idea of it. There are a lot of great horror stories that take classic children's tales and twist them into something scary and thought-provoking. Sadly, this movie settles for either being a parody of bad slasher films or just being a bad slasher film. To its credit, the opening animation summarizing the backstory was fantastic and made me think this would actually be good, but most of the movie is more unsettling than scary, embodying the most cliche horror tropes and not making use of its premise. I put it in the middle of my list because I don't really hate it, but I do recognize that it is pretty terrible. Then at number 4 is Slother House. Winnie the Pooh wasn't the only adorable creature to get an extremely mediocre horror film in 2023, and Slother House is absolutely the worst the year had to offer. I get that this movie's plot is supposed to be silly, but when the script tries to invest us in the drama between unlikable college girls, the horror is all it has to fall back on. And even by dumb slasher standards, Slother House is just ridiculous, and I was constantly asking myself why the character characters made certain decisions and why certain scenes were dragged out longer than necessary. Movies like this only work if I'm entertained and like the characters well enough to care if they survive, and Slother House failed to do both. Coming in at number 3 is No Hard Feelings. The title may say No Hard Feelings, but it's hard not to feel that way after watching it. I honestly have no idea what the filmmakers were thinking with this, or why Jennifer Lawrence agreed to star in it. No Hard Feelings follows a 32-year-old woman in a bad financial situation who is paid by the parents of an awkward 19-year-old boy to date him before he goes off to college. Right off the bat, whatever studio funded this should have known that this was a terrible idea, especially in 2023.
2023. I mean, if the genders were reversed and this was about a 32-year-old man grooming an emotionally vulnerable 19-year-old girl, the film would have been cancelled in a heartbeat and eviscerated by the media. It is so uncomfortable seeing Jennifer Lawrence's character trying to seduce a man with the emotional maturity of a child who is clearly uncomfortable with her advances. The movie does have some heartfelt scenes between them once they focus on getting to know each other, but most of the film is just really sad to watch. I said earlier that 2023 made me realize just how much I hate cringe comedies, and No Hard Feelings is the worst of the bunch. Coming in at number two, and very close to number one, I might add, is Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist. There were some really good faith-based movies in 2023. Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist was not one of them. It's really my fault for having any kind of hope that this movie would be good. The first Left Behind movie was also terrible, but a series about the rapture and how humanity responds to it has so much potential. And when you bring the Antichrist into the mix, there's so much the filmmakers could have done with that. Unfortunately, Rise of the Antichrist is another dull movie that drags along and wastes all of its potential. The movie also makes several less than subtle references and parallels to the COVID-19 pandemic and other political issues even though they have no bearing on the plot. A lot of mainstream movies are criticized for shoehorning left-wing politics rather than focusing on the story. Well, if we get mad when Hollywood movies shove left-wing politics down our throats, then we should also get mad when independent movies shove right-wing politics down our throats. For a movie with Antichrist in the title, I honestly cannot remember who the Antichrist was. He isn't revealed until the end and is so forgettable he leaves no impact. Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist had a great premise and could have done something cool, but it was more interested in pushing an agenda than telling a well-crafted story. And finally, at number one is Knights of the Zodiac. It may have been difficult to choose the best movie of 2023, but there was no debate for the worst, and Knights of the Zodiac is a terrible movie in almost every way. In terms of filmmaking, it definitely has high points, with cool action and some decent special effects, but it also has abysmal acting and a horribly constructed narrative. Knights of the Zodiac represents just about everything that makes a bad movie. An overly complex complicated plot with inconsistent world building, lazy script writing, lackluster performances, over-reliance on action and special effects, and underdeveloped characters with no chemistry. I was genuinely shocked that the movie was as bad as it is, and I was thrilled when it was finally over. It had enormous potential, but failed in just about every department, making Knights of the Zodiac the worst movie of 2023. Well, there you have it. Those are my picks for the worst movies of the year. It may not have been very hard to choose these movies, but it was still a lot of fun to make this list. If you feel there are any terrible movies that I should have included, share your own top 10 worst list down in the comments so that we know to avoid them. Also, be sure to check out my top 10 best movies of 2023. Well, time to bring this to a close. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in 2024.